Got a bit of a different project today. Check this out. This is my big old propane tank. A little rusty. I'm down to like almost 20%, which is a problem only because last time I filled that tank was 1300 bucks. Propane has doubled since then, almost a year ago. Literally doubled. So if I have to fill that tank, it's going to be 2500 Eventually I'm going to have to fill it, but I'm hoping to stretch that 20% out as long as I can. Here's a few things I'm thinking about doing. Here's one I am doing. Right over here is the AC unit. It's a AC, it's HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. The heating aspect is propane. Um, and that uses a lot of propane. Right on the other side of this wall is our propane dryer. Over there is our propane oven. The propane dryer, um, I just pulled some wire. I'm going to poke the wire through the back side of the wall and land it in the laundry room. And I may as soon as tonight go get an electric dryer. Because um, I found some scratch and dent stuff pretty cheap, like 700 bucks washer and dryer brand new that have some scratches. So I'm good with that. So what I did originally when I redid this garage, I put in a bigger panel and I put two dedicated circuits down into this box. So I've pulled 130 amp over there for the dryer and I pulled 130 amp up here for the hot water heater. So, so typically natural gas is pretty efficient um, cost-wise. Propane's more money cost-wise, but still relatively efficient compared to electric. But with the propane prices going just through the roof nuts check these numbers out so estimated 529 dollars a year that's at a price of says it somewhere on here a dollar 87 a gallon it's like four bucks right now so you know i don't i don't use 283 gallons um out of this but we use substantially less because we actually have two hot water heaters. That side of the house is electric. This side is propane. But I'm going to get this thing out of here. Um, and that's going to hopefully stretch out that propane use. And then over time, we're going to actually be much less expensive for electric simply because I oversized the solar system. So electricity is essentially free, um, which is a weird way to look at it. Electricity is essentially prepaid in the cost of the solar and a fixed price. So electricity's gone up, but I paid for the solar two years ago. So electricity going up doesn't matter because the solar's producing it. Um, so you yank this baby out of here. You see it's unplumbed from the propane. I've already pulled the 30 amp wires over here. I haven't capped the breakers off too. So, um, as soon as I get this one drained the rest of the way, I'm gonna pull it off. It's like, hot water outlet right here, cold water inlet right here, the uh, overpressure you know, relief right there through the wall. It has this propane vent, which I've unpiped, but I think I'm actually gonna leave it there and just cap it, in case you never know, maybe some crazy stuff happens someday and I decide to go back to propane, however extremely unlikely. I, I just don't see any real reason to pull all that stuff out of the ceiling and the roof that it goes up to the flat roof. Um, and then there's the flex hose, so, this thing, um, it's it's probably a little older too. I mean, if I just take a guess, it talks about based on a 2007 national average. So they obviously didn't make it after, you know, a f within a few years of that. So either way, I'm looking at at least a 10, 15 year old appliance. But rather than slam a new propane one in there, I'm going with this. And I've done one of these out at the new construction. This is a hybrid electric. So it's going to take the 30 amp 240 volts here. Uh, and then the ground goes right there. So it doesn't need a neutral. Um, and it's got these big heating elements like a normal hot water heater. But this is the, this is the added feature. This upper part is an actual heat pump. And the reason why they call it a hybrid is because it's either electric heated or heat pump. And the heat pump doesn't generate heat, it really moves it. Um, really that's kind of how like the house heat pump works. It's the same thing, they're very efficient, but they can't build a lot of heat rapidly. So in the case that we discharge this whole 50 gallons and we need hot water, these will actually kick in. But you know, we're pretty conservative on our hot water use. So check it out in here. There's a condenser, an evaporator, this fan, 
Um, and actually what's really cool about this system is because it pulls the heat out of this existing garage, this will actually s provide some cooling to this garage, especially in the summer. So that's kind of neat. So that's what I'm going to put in. Um, these are expensive though. This is like an $1,800 hot water heater. It was $1,600 a year ago when I bought it for the new construction. Everything's gone up here with Build Back Better. Um, but I got this one for twelve hundred bucks in the box, you know, new, but the but the box was kind of banged up. So I think it was like a return, and I buy them from people that sell them. You know, they buy them at an auction and then they resell them on offer up and stuff. So <laughs> look at these numbers: estimated cost one hundred and thirteen bucks. So five twenty nine at stupid cheap electric, uh, stupid cheap propane rates, a dollar eighty seven per gallon. Which actually, that was what it was like two dollars last year, so you know, a little over a year ago. Um, just gonna be substantial savings. So, oh, sounds like I might have just been. It's getting close to empty, which means almost time to lift this baby off. Um, so, <clears throat> very substantial savings. Even if I just rough number it, I estimate I'm gonna be saving about four hundred dollars a year. And, and that's probably very conservative. It may be quite a bit more, but even if I go with the baseline of 400 a year, I'm looking at you know a three year payoff. Um, so that's, that's well worth it to me. And, and in reality, if we do use as much as we could, you know, it could be just a two year payoff. So it's sort of like, I'm just prepaying the next couple of years. And then after two to three years, it's all, whatever we save is all savings. So this has a 10 year warranty. So you figure I'm gonna be getting seven to eight years of every year savings, you know, several hundred dollars a year for those seven to eight years. So um, I got, this stuff wasn't gonna be that tough, but but just because this is giving water to my house, I'm not gonna do this 100% DIY. I have my plumbing friend coming over, but normal hot water heaters that go in the top on the hybrid one the top is occupied by the heat pump so i need to repipe them down here to the sides the relief valve is about the same but the cold water in the bottom and the hot water out the top so we need to take the cold water run it down bring it over the hot water bring it out over down and then into that upper one so i'm gonna have some help sweating the pipes and whatnot because if I screw it up, we'll have no hot water on this side of the house until I'm able to fix it. So um, kind of just a neat neat idea and looking at the cost of the heater and the electricity and calculating all those numbers is really not that difficult. A lot of people show videos on how to do that, but showing you how it applies to me. I got it. Let me take it. Yeah, this one. It's a little sizzling, huh? Yeah. Okay. Water. I see that. I think it's just a minimal little bit. A winner. Wired. That's the cold. Still got to do the hot. Here we All right, finished product. 
wired, looped in, straps. Um, now that it's hot, I just got it tight. Cap the propane. Um, hot and cold, dropped in. Put the insulation on them. Uh, put a gate, uh, let me think. That type of valve, rather than the, uh, the uh, gate valve that was on there, uh, ball valve. And um, here's the flexes. I actually may add a little support right here. Maybe not totally necessary, but I'm thinking about doing it. Um, it's powered on. Here's what's cool about this one. I can leave it on efficiency, which will only heat the water using the heat pump. I can put it on hybrid, which will heat the water using the heat pump unless it gets too cold and then it'll kick in the elements. Um, I could put it just on regular electric, use the elements only, or I can set the vacation mode to how many days we're leaving. I can adjust the temperature here. I left it at 120. Um, so it's sweet, it's working good. I'm gonna get a different cap for that vent. Um, I did uh, make a couple decisions. One, down here on the pan, that goes out with a one inch. Behind it, there's an elbow and a three quarter for the uh, condensate drain. And because I already had made two big penetrations, I didn't want to make another one. I went ahead and I took the relief valve here, dropped it into the pan, at which point it's going to go out there. So this is equivalent of a drain. Um, I guess I got to fix the carpet, the, uh, the turf here. But the two penetrations are here, sealed them all up. As you see, the condensate drain's already running, doing its thing. Um, and I'm good because this is sloped. And I also sealed the, this concrete in here um, for other reasons, but you know, it's not gonna be see seeping in the concrete all the time. It's gonna be running off. You see, it's already running off. So, um, and unfortunately I couldn't use that relief, uh, which is really a bummer because that one was sweet. But the thing is, because this top end is the heat pump section, this is much lower and that is the relief so it would have to flow up and it wouldn't really function so i made a decision to drop it down my understanding in talking with the plumber is these don't typically burst if they start to have a problem they'll drip so at least if it's dripping here i'll see it and if it does drip there it'll flow over and drain outside anyway whereas if i were to try to run it uphill i'm not sure that it would work effectively and I definitely know it wouldn't be the code. So there is my install. Two weeks later, propane level is pretty steady. And working good. And as you can see, I did make a little change to the electric dryer too. So one thing I want to point out, I'm going to leave this on the efficiency setting, which means it's only going to run in the hybrid heat pump mode. Uh, or in the heat pump only mode. If I were to put it on hybrid, it would prefer to run the heat pump, but if it ends up, you know, if I end up using a lot of water, it'll kick in the electric elements. Those are gonna use a lot of electricity compared to the heat pump. So this can run, it, it'll probably run for an hour to heat up this tank, but it's running very low amps. So that's by far the most cost effective. And that's, I'm just gonna leave it like that. And uh, if I find I'm running out of hot water, you know, maybe I'll make a change, but so far so good on that. And as you can see, um, I went to these more uh, high efficiency type, a um, little bit newer. This one doesn't use as much water as a typical front, uh, top loader. You know, in a way, a front loader is going to be more um, efficient because it's it uses has to use less water. But we got tons of water here, so this is the dryer. As you can see down there, it's got the electrical cord. You can't see very well, but right down that way is where the propane was. Um, so I unpiped that, and I I can show you better out here. It's uh, capped, capped and checked for leaks and good to go. So if for whatever reason stuff changes in the future and I wanted to go back to um, propane, I could, but they're properly capped and checked for leaks using a chemical. And uh, overall, I'm happy. I mean, this has made really a minimal, minimal, minimal change in our electric usage, but it's definitely pretty substantial in our propane usage, which the propane is just so high right now. So that's the finished product.